Welcome to this new trading system in trading method and to this new scanner in the Metagrid family. It's the channel Bounce Scanner. This scanner is based on a new trading method and system, which is really hot discussed in our trading channel. And if you don't know this trading channel on Telegram, please use the link um, in the video description below. Then you can go to this channel. It's free. And since some weeks, I think even two months or so, um, many, many people jumped into this trading method and system. And so I made now an own scanner for this because it's a little bit time consuming if you want to check all the pairs by yourself that you find a valid signal for this trading method. And so the scanner does all the work for you. You only get, get an alert. If you have a valid signal, because you have to check two time frames for every pair, and so this is time consuming, this makes the scanner all for you. And you simply wait that you get the alerts and you will see all the signals on an own screen that you can easily select the best signals for you. And I will all show you this in this video. I will show you firstly, of course, how this trading system and method works. What is the method by itself? Then I will show you how you can uh, add and start a scanner and then I will show you how the screen for the scanner works. So the screen which shows you the different signals and how you would use the screen to jump into signals. And of course I show you the auto trader too. There is an auto trader built in in this scanner if you want to use it. All this now in this video and let's go into it. Now I explain you how a valid signal looks like for the channel bounce trading system. How you get all this stuff on the chart, I show you later. It's very easy. You simply open a template and then you have all the stuff on your chart. What you see here are two green lines and this is the channel we are looking at. We want to see that the candles bounce on such a green line. Like you can see here, the candles came to this um, lower channel and after that it began to bounce and we um, only use for this first step and the system has two steps in the first step we are only looking on the hourly time frame so the h1 and we want to see a bounce on the green channel and on the same place where the bounce happens we need a blue arrow like here this is a first step valid signal and then we have to look for the second step but the first valid step is that we have a bounce here on the upper green channel line and we have on the same place a blue arrow which is pointing into our channel. So here the uh, candles began to bounce and they go back into the channel and we have a signal from the blue arrow which also confirms here this bounce. Here you can see we have a blue arrow which is pointing upwards but this signal happened outside our channel. If this happened here, for example, here, and then uh, the candles uh, would have gone um, upwards again and we had here a blue arrow, then this would have been a valid signal. But this is not a valid signal because it happened outside our green channel. So first on the H1 time frame, we have here a valid cell signal because the um, arrow points downwards. We have the bounce and what we do then is we switch to the M15 time frame. We do this now. We switch to the M15 time frame and what we want to see here is also a cell signal because if we go back to H1, this is a cell first step cell signal. It's point downwards. We have the bounce here. The price goes into the channel again and we need now a cell signal and this red um, signal here red is for sell and green is for buy signals we have a red sell signal and this signal comes i mark it for you with the close of this candle after the close of this candle i marked for you we get here or we got here this sell signal and after that you would get an alert from the scanner so if this candle close and we get here the sell signal then you get the alert from the scanner because firstly we have here the valid bounce on the H1. This is step one. And step two is also fulfilled. We have a sell signal 
after the bounce on the H1 time frame. So these are the two steps. And you can see if you had ended here the trade, now um, we have a really nice down move so far, a really nice winner. Again, first step, H1 time frame. We want to see a blue arrow. And on the same place as the blue arrow appears on your screen, we need a bounce on the channel. Not like here, like here. This is the perfect signal, step one signal. And the scanner does exactly the, this for you. It scans the H1 time frame and the M15 time frame. And only if both steps are fulfilled, then you will get an alert from the scanner like here. So you ne don't need all to do the work because it's very time consuming. If you always have to check all the pairs on the H1 time frame, wait for such a, a situation. And then you have also to check the M15 time frame for a valid signal there. It's very time consuming and the scanner does this all for you and gives you only an alert if both steps are fulfilled like here. You maybe wonder what, what this indicator shows you here. It's the extra confirmation indicator. The scanner does not use this indicator so far, but some people use this extra confirmation as a step three. They say when the signal is here on the M15 time frame, we want also to see that the yellow line is below. In this case, it's a cell signal. It's below um, the white zero line. So in this case, um, the third step is also fulfilled. We have the green line below the white line because it's a cell signal. On a buy signal, we want to see the yellow line above the white line. But in 90% of all cases of the signals, you will see that the yellow line is in alignment with the signal. And so the scanner does not use it so far because this extra confirmation in my opinion, is not really necessary for the system. But if you want this extra confirmation, you can look here on this indicator and on a cell signal. If the H1 is fulfilled, the M15 is fulfilled. And then you look also on the extra confirmation. In this case, like I told you, it's a cell signal. We want to see the yellow line below the white zero line. On a buy signal, we need um, the yellow line above the white zero line. I give you another example here on the dollar against the Mexican currency. And you can see we are again on the H1 time frame. And what we have here is the same. You can see the candles bounced here on our channel, on our trend channel. And on the same place, we have here the blue arrow, which is pointing downwards. Downwards means we're looking for a sell opportunity. Here again, we have a not valid signal. We have the blue arrow outside of our green channel. Uh, it is not valid because the bounce happened not on our green um, channel line here. But again, this is only step one. So we have step one. Uh, okay, it's okay. We have a valid signal on the H1 time frame. And now we have to check if we also have a sell signal on the M15 time frame. I mark for you here this um, candle after the arrow because this blue arrow comes after the close of this candle. And so we have to mark the next one that we can look if we have a valid signal on the M15 after this bounce. Okay, so let's go to the M15 time frame. This is the position I marked for you. And after this position, we need now a sell signal. And yes, there is a sell signal. This is the red sell sec sec signal here. And after this candle, let's check exactly. It came with the close of this uh, candle here and you would end it after that. And because the sc uh, scanner would uh, give you the signal after um, this uh, signal here appears and both steps are fulfilled. And then you would here uh, enter the trade in the cell direction. And you can see um, if you need the extra confirmation, the yellow um, line is below the zero line, so the extra confirmation is also valid. Like I told you, in 90% of the cases, um, this uh, third confirmation is every time in alignment and normally you don't need it. But I have added it to the chart because some people are using it. But you can see again, um, it's time consuming because you have to check the H1. You have to wait until such 
uh, situation happens that we get a bounce of the candles on our green channel and we need a blue arrow and then we have to check m15 and wait on m15 you can see here came the blue arrow this is the time where the blue arrow came on the h1 time frame and then you had to wait until here when we get the sell signal on the m15 and then you can enter the trade and these are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven candles later so it's really time consuming if you have to wait that all this um, happens and the scanner does all the work for you you only get a signal if all is in alignment with this trading method i give you another example in the buy direction we had now to sell Uh, signals here we are on the Aussie dollar and you can see we have here our blue arrow and this blue arrow is exactly on the green line and the bounce of the candles happened here exactly on the lower green line of our channel this is the channel and the candles bounced here exactly on the channel and on the bounce we have the blue arrow pointing upwards and in, in this case this means we are looking for a buy opportunity so i mark for you again this candle because with the beginning of this candle we have the blue arrow it came after the close of this one and don't make the mistake that you mark this candle because if you mark this candle you would mark the beginning of the h1 candle and you would make a big mistake on backtesting you have to mark the next candle because if with the beginning of this candle you see this blue arrow and not before it's a big mistake which many people do on with backtesting a system um, we go to the m15 and check now if we get after this white uh, marked line a buy signal on the m15 and you can see yes we have a m15 buy signal it's a green one green means buy and you can see again that the yellow line is above the um, zero line so the extra confirmation is also good here um, It is now, and it, is, it makes a prediction in the future. The um, future prediction is now um, exactly on this white line. Maybe you would say, okay, it's too risky, but basically you can see with the signal here, it was in our um, above the white line. So the valid is with the extra confirmation also good. And you have entered or would have entered this trade. Let's see, the signal came here with this um, candle, the green one here. Then You would have entered this trade and now you would be um, zero at the moment so um, it's a little bit in drawdown but it can happen that it goes here until the end of this channel for example you can see this is a valid buy signal you have here i give you one more example again a buy example here on the pound dollar we have the same here you can see the bounce happens here exactly on the channel on the lower end of the channel and we have on the same place our blue arrow which points upwards so this means we looking for our buy opportunity on the m15 so i mark it again for you that you can see this a uh, time so with this white line um the blue arrow was on our chart and now we look on m15 if after the white line a buy signal came we switch to m15 Here was the blue arrow and you can see, yes, indeed, there was a buy signal on our um, indicator. And let's see, the signal came here with this, with this um, candle. And you can see in this case, the uh, yellow line was below our white zero line. So if you trade with the extra confirmation, you would maybe not have not ended this trade. And there is maybe another reason you say I want to take this trade because um, the channel is very small on M15. And if you enter here the trade, it's possible that you get again a bounce on the M15 channel here. Um, so at the moment, uh, candles don't know what they want to do if they break out of this uh, channel or not. But this is maybe a reason you would not have ended this trade. But the scanner would uh, give you an alert for this signal because both um, situations are okay. You have the H1 confirmation, you have the M15 confirmation, and then it's really up to you if you want to enter this trade or not. Like the most systems, it's always good that you make an own judgment and that you decide for yourself 
do I want to enter such trades or not? The scanner so far does not uh, use here this extra confirmation and does not um, stop you uh, with alerts uh, because it's very close here to this M15 channel because the M15 channels do not hold every time. It's likely or it's possible that you will see that here the price goes up, maybe. But it's a riskier trade so far. If you make your own judgment, you would say, okay, if I use this uh, signal, if I use this alert from the scanner, um, I go maybe with a um, smaller lot size or I skip this trade at all. This is up to you. And this is how it looks. If you get an alert from the scanner, don't uh, look at the order block alerts because I have Metagrid running on some other charts. But this here are the alerts from the scanner. It says to you, okay, bound scanner, possible buy on Aussie dollar. Here possible buy on an uh, exotic pair. Um, the scanner uses all the pairs you have here in the market watch, watch window. If you have don't want a signal for a specific pair, you simply remove it here from the market watch window. Um, all other pairs the scanner will observe for you and scan for you. And you can see you get here the alerts. You can um, also get the alerts by push notification on your smartphone or per email. By email, uh, you have the opportunities to set these alerts on um, the settings of the scanner. But it's a little bit uh, difficult if you have only here this alerts on this window from MT4 because if you click here on OK, then this window disappears and now you don't know which signals you had in the last hour or 50 minutes or so. So for this reason, I made an extra screen that you can see all signals from the last hours and that you can easily check them. You have also the possibility to open every signal by one mouse click. And this is how this screen looks like. You can simply open this. Um, in this case, I show you how simple it is to open this screen in one minute. Uh, but let's look um, on the screen. You can see here the pair where a signal was found. You can see what signal it is, buy or sell. You can see the signal time here in this case based on your local time. So the time you see here is the local time. And here you can see the signal price. This means this is the price when the signal was found from the scanner. Here was the price when the signal appeared on the screen. And you have an interesting um, row here. Here you can see how the signal performed so far. This means this signal was found um, at this time, at this price. And since then, price moved 5.3 pips. I explain to you later why this is an important information for you, but you can simply see here the performance of every signal, signal since the scanner found it. This has nothing to do if you had opened this trade or if you um, have running a trade from the scanner. This shows you only the performance of the signal from the moment the scanner displayed it on your screen here. So from the time it was found, it moved so far and you can see it was now um, updated 5.4.5 uh, pips and you can easily see the performance for every signal here. And how do you get this screen on your chart? It's very simple. You open a fresh chart. It does not matter which pair you use. Let's use here the pound dollar. You make here a chart, new chart window. You can see the pound dollar has been opened. It's clean chart. And then you make a click on the right mouse button. You go to template, load template, and then you use bounce underline scanner underline screen point TPL. It's very important that we use the right template. It says bounce scanner screen. This template comes with the system. So it's installed on your MT4. If you purchase the system and um, so we mark it and we click on OK. And then you can see the screen is immediately here on your chart. And now you can check all the signals. One thing we can change uh, before I go into it. Um, if you make again now uh, click on the right, right mouse button 
and we go to expert advisors and properties, then you can make some changes to the screen. And one interesting change is this line here, the refresh time for movement in seconds. This tells the screen how often it should make an update. So for example, now it makes every 60 seconds an update. So it looks every 60 seconds for a new signal and it only updates the movement in pips also every 60 seconds. If you want to have this in real time, you would change it here and make a one in it. So it updates now every second. We click on OK and you can see now you have the movement here in real time. It does not update it every 60 seconds and every signal the scanner founds is immediately to see on the screen and not after 60 seconds or so. So we have to test if this is okay for your computer. If you have a normal computer, um, it should be not a problem. But you can, if you see that your computer gets slower uh, because of this real-time update, then you maybe use 10 seconds, 20 seconds or 60 seconds. But normally it is no problem for the most computers. If you have a very old computer, maybe you have to uh, use here the 60 second update time or um, other uh, number, but normally you can go with the one second. But I use very often the 60 second that I don't see all the movement here. It's up to you if you want it real time or not. And the question of course is, what does this row helps you? I think this is a very, very important information you have here with the movement in pips, because this shows you if you can still take this signal. If we look, for example, on the Kiwi dollar, it's the newest signal, the newest is always on the top. And you can see the scanner found it on my local time. It's um, 1.45 um, all around. So if you look here on my local time, it was found four minutes ago. So this signal is only uh, um, four minutes old. And if you look on the four minutes old signal, it moved so far one pip against us if we had opened it exactly on this time. This means we have a four minute old signal which has not moved very far, far so far. So this means we can still jump in it. If you look here, we have a signal on the um, dollar Mexican. Then you can see this was found one hour ago and it already moved 169 uh, um, pips. It makes no sense to jump into this signal now. It's too late. The signal is it was good, but it uh, is not nothing for us. The same is here. It was also found one hour ago. It's on the dollar in the Swedish currency. And you can see this signal is far away from our entry. It, it, had a, it has a big drawdown. So far, we don't jump in it now. But on the other hand, we have here also a signal which was found one hour ago, the pound um, dollar uh, signal. And so far, it moved only four pips in the green pips. So this gives us the possibility to still jump into this trade because it's still good. It traveled not too far and it's not in drawdown. And if we click here now on this uh, button, open pound dollar, you can see that the screen brings us immediately here to this pair. It loads here the M15 chart and you can see this is the green signal we are talking about. This is the M15 buy signal. And let's check if we have really a H1 bounce. Yes, on the H1 we had a bounce. The, channel did, uh, the scanner did a really good job. And so um, the M15 uh, signal, which uh, let's check when it came exactly, it came with this candle. And like the uh, screen told you, it's only uh, some pips in profit so far. You have the, still the chance to jump here into this signal. This is the very important information you will get here with the movement in pips. It has nothing to do with your own trades. It, ha it has nothing to do um, if this um, signal was a winner or not. It only shows you if it makes sense, still jump into this signal. Okay. This is a very important information. You can see the same here with this signal, which was found 90 minutes ago. So a long time ago, and it's the dollar against the Singapore dollar. And it's a sell signal. 
and it has not moved very far. So maybe we can still jump in it. If we open the chart, we wait until all is loaded. You can see this was the sell signal. And on the H1, we had again the bounce. So the scanner did a good job for us. And, but you can see it traveled um, in profit, but it now sits on the M15 at the end of this green channel. Maybe we say, okay, even if it traveled not so far, it is maybe not a good idea now to jump in after 90 minutes. This is the reason why you should check your charts, but it helps really a lot if you see here the movement in pips. And the freshest signal is always uh, on the first position, like I told you, you can see is the Kiwi dollar. And you can see after now 10 minutes, uh, it moved here one pip in profit. If we open here the signal, you can see this is the fresh green signal, which was just found. It just begins here and on the H1, you can see we have the bounce like we want to have it. And now you could here jump into a buy trade. You can see the um, extra confirmation is also above the white line so far. In the future prediction, it uh, sits around here the white line. But like I told you, normally I don't use the extra confirmation for my trading decisions. And on the M15, we have still room to the end of this um, channel. You can use it basically as a target if you want to have. Very often it is really the case that the signal travels um, to the end, other end of the channel on M15, because the M15 is our entry time frame. So I would not use the H1 that you say, okay, I set the target here because normally it's better to use um, the entry time frame, which is always M15, and you can't change this. You can't change it to your own time frame because the system works like I told you with the H1 and the M15 as the entry time frame. You can't change it. If you um, think you can manipulate it with other time frame, it's not possible. There are not no settings for this because you would destroy the system and it would not work anymore. Okay. So this is the reason because you don't have the option to change here the time frames uh, like you want to. Okay. This is the screen. If the screen is filled with many signals, you will see that the scanner deletes all the old signals and begins afresh from the beginning here. So you don't have to care that you have to lead um, sometimes the signals or so the, uh, the screen and the scanner does this automatically for you. Um, it can show up to 20 signals on the same time. After 20 signals, it will make a refresh and will begin um, fresh with fresh signals. So uh, the, the screen um, shows always the last maximum, the last 20 signals. Let's go back into the settings of the screen. We make again a click on the right mouse button and we go to Expert Advisors Properties. I explain you some more settings. This here tells the screen which template it should open if you click here on one of these chart buttons and the bounce underline check TPL template is delivered with the system. So it's installed on your computer if you purchase the system. So you don't have to care about this. It opens then um, the correct template like you saw it if I click on it. And the nice thing is with this template on the M15, you see only the M15 entry signals and on the H1 time frame you see only the bounce signals. So it's a very clean a chart that you see very fast if it's a valid signal or not. This is the nice thing with the template you get with this scanner. We go back to our settings of the screen. So if you want to use an own template, you can of course change this. Then you have to add here the new template name and don't forget that you always have to tell um, the computer or the software that is a point TPL. So don't forget the last three um, yeah, TPLs here. <laughs> so um, refresh time I also uh, already explained to you. Here you can change now a lot uh, how the screen should look like. You can change the distance of these columns if you want smaller columns, if you want, for example, 
a smaller font size for the signals. You can change the colors of this rows here, the color of the signal itself and so on. So this are basically all from here on all um, settings for the appearance of the screen. Okay. If you like it, like it is, you don't have to change anything, but if it not fits on your screen, because maybe you have a bigger screen or a smaller screen, you can change every element here of the scanner screen. So even here, the go button is this button here. So you can even change um, the width and the height of uh, these buttons and you can exactly um, change it that it fits on your screen in case you have difficulties to see the signals. Play around with the different settings until you like it for your screen. For the most uh, screens, um, the, the default settings should work, but if not, then you can change here. Everything It's more or less self-explaining. You can see um, header distance from above means um, the distance from here to here. So when the first signal should appear on your screen and from the left side, how many space do you want from the left side, for example, and so on. And here you can also or, um, change um, the logo here. If you want a bigger one or smaller one, you can change it here um, again. So everything you can here adjust in these settings. And now comes the last but very important part because we did not start yet the scanner itself. You saw the screen and of course there were, there were signals on it because I already have running the scanner. But if you purchase the package in the system, you have to do this step now at the beginning normally. You can of course start a scanner uh, screen also at the beginning, but then you see no signals. So the first step after you purchase the, the system is to start the scanner itself. The one thing is the screen you saw now with all the signals on it, but that you can get the signals on the screen, you need to start the scanner itself, of course. And this is what we do now. And normally you would do this as the first step um, if you start the system. For this, we use a blank chart. You can use any pair you like. I used in this case the Euro uh, cat, but it does not matter. We use a blank chart. And now we make with the mouse, uh, we click on the right button of our mouse. We go to template, load template, and that we can start the scanner itself. We use this template bounce underline scanner point TBL. This is the most important step because if you don't do this, you will see no signals at all. Okay. On the screen will uh, stay blank all day long. You need to start the scanner itself. And this is what we do now. We click on OK. And now the scanner is attached to our chart. You can see it says here bounce underline scanner. It has a smiley face. And now you can see that the scanner switches through all these pairs. And this chart we don't use for checking the signals and we don't use this chart for trading. This is only a chart for the scanner itself. So you don't close it, of course, we need it to stay open all day long, but you can maybe move it uh, around here that you don't see it anymore, but don't close it. The scanner is now attached. It's, it scans for pairs and don't care about the time frames and what the scanner does. It happens all in the background. Okay. But this is the engine itself. This is the scanner itself, which scans the pairs and you can do so some um, settings for the scanner itself and for the auto trader, which is also included in this package. And for this, we need this chart here and we make on this chart where the scanner is attached. I click with our right mouse button again. We go to expert advisors and properties. And now you can make some changes for the scanner itself. First of all, you have to add here the serial number because if you don't add your serial number, you will get an error and a warning on your screen that you have to edit here. Also, so uh, you simply add here your serial number you get from us. And then you have here the option to activate the auto trader. It's false for the moment. If you put this here with a double click to true, the scanner will open every signal it founds or finds with a trade. 
Uh, my recommendation is that you don't use this 24-7. You should really think about when to use this auto trader. I normally use it when the market conditions are good and I don't have the time to check it for myself, the signals. Then I turn this auto trader on maybe for one or two hours and then I deactivate it again. You should not run it all day long. This will not work, especially not during the difficulty trading times, for example. So please use the auto trader only for the moments you don't have time and if you are sure that the market conditions are looking good. You should this first use on a demo account, not with real money. Um, in the future uh, updates, maybe there are um, added more settings to the auto trader. It's at the moment experimental um, because some people wanted this auto trader, so I added it to the scanner. Um, but my recommendation is really that you use mostly your own judgment, that you open the trades by it yourself, that you check the signals like I showed you before, and you use the auto trader if you don't have the time and the conditions are good. And please use it first on a demo account that you can see how it reacts and what it does. But it's very simple at the moment. You decide here the lot size for every trade. So every trade um, would now be opened with two micro lots. The magic number you can change if you have more EAs running on your MT4. You can give this scanner an own number, a random number you want. If you have only this scanner running here, and especially using the auto trader, and then you don't have to change anything. And if you don't use the auto trader, um, this number is totally, you can do totally ignore it. It is really only necessary to change this magic number if you have more EAs running on the same MT4. Here you define your target uh, in ticks. This means 100 ticks are 10 pips. And the same is here for the stop loss. You decide here the stop loss. It's at the moment 150 ticks. So this is 15 pips. So you can decide what you want to go for. Um, it depends, uh, in my opinion, also on the market condition. If we have very slow movement, you would change it to a lower number. If we have a, a good movement in the, in the pairs, you can go for more. Um, like I told you, the auto trader is at the moment experimental. Um, maybe there come more, there will more uh, settings coming in the future, in new updates. It depends if you want and have this auto trader developed more or not. At the moment, it's a very simple auto trader, really for the situations that you don't have time to trade it by yourself. Um, here are the alert options. Here you can decide where you get the alerts from the scanner itself. This has nothing to do with the screen you saw. The screen shows you all the signals on one screen. But if you would not use this screen, because for any reason you don't like it maybe, you can say that the scanner itself should also give signals. You can get the signals on the screen. I showed you this pop-up uh, pop window uh, earlier. Then you get, get for every new signal a pop-up window. It tells you there is a possible new trade. And then you have to go by yourself to open the chart and check it. Uh, with the screen you saw this, uh, of the scanner, you have all the signals in, in, in place and you can easily uh, check them. But maybe you don't want uh, this to do it this way. Then you can use this scanner pop-up windows here, this alert. You can also get alerts uh, as push alerts to your smartphone and by email. For these last two options, of course, you have to set MT4 that it can sense push notifications and emails. There are a lot of tutorials. Um, if you search on Google, you will find tutorials how you can set MT4 that it can sense push notifications to your smartphone and to your email account. But if you have set the MT4 for this, you can turn it to true and then you will get the alerts by mail or push alert too. If you use the screen I showed you before, you can of course put all these signals to false if you want, and then you would only use the screen itself, but then you don't get any pop-up alert, okay? So how do uh, I use it? I use it this way that I use this here with true. So I get from the scanner a pop-up alert that a new signal has been found. And then I switch to my screen 
and I look there for the signal and I open the chart and I look how much movement it already has and so, so on. So this is, uh, in my opinion, the best setting you can use that you get the screen alerts or if you are wave and, and you have not uh, sitting always on in, in front of the screen, maybe you are at work or so, then you can of course send the alerts to your smartphone and then you check from there. But this is the option I use here. And like I told you, I lose, use the auto trader only um, if I don't have time and I know the market condition is good. So this is the scanner itself. It runs here and let it run on an own chart here. Don't close this chart because then the scanner is immediately stopped. It needs to run all day long here on this chart that it can collect all the signals you then can see on the screen. And this is basically it. Um, this is the scanner, this is the system. Of course, all future updates are free. If you have purchased the system, you get all the future updates free for free. Um, of course, there will be updates and I think the system develops more and more, but it's a really stable and good system. And please join our Telegram group to come in touch with the other people who are using this method. And with this scanner, you can really find the signals for this method in seconds. You wait until the scanner gives you an alert. Then you check the signal like I showed you on the screen. And if you come, maybe you let the scanner run two or three hours and then you come back to your computer and your screen and you see, okay, there are 10 new signals. Then you check these 10 signals like I showed you. How old is this signal? What is the movement so far? Are we in drawdown? Are we in profit at the moment? How far traveled the signal since it has been found? Is it make makes it sense to still jump in or not? And so on. And it's really easy. It makes really fun. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at metagrid.com. And I hope you enjoy the scanner. Until next time, goodbye.